I mean, I don't even really know how to process this, man. I mean, it's, it's wow. not this year. He's going to do a little farewell tour, um, so to speak. But uh, Coach K, according to our buddy Jeff Goodman from Stadium, is going to resign after this season. I mean, we're going to talk about an institution. Um, we saw Roy Williams step down in North Carolina. Uh, Coach K, uh, not far behind. Uh, just goes to show we all getting old. Um, these coaches that we've been watching our whole lives at these institutions of higher learning um, are calling it a career. And, um, you know, interesting, in, uh, and according to Goodman, John Shire, uh, the Duke assistant, he has been approved as the next head coach of the Blue Devils, sources tell stadium. Mid-afternoon meeting just to rubber stamp Coach K's uh, selection. Um, and I th there was more of the same type of uh, scuttlebutt that I think accompanied the departure of Roy Williams, uh, which was a source telling, source close to Coach K telling Jeff Goodman that he's obviously nearing the end of his career, but name, image, and likeness coming into college basketball and the transfer portal being out of control definitely sped wow. up his timeline. Wow. And I'm sorry, that's just such a, I'm not, not sorry, that's just such a turnoff. And then yeah. I'll just kind of, uh, I'll just kind of multitask or, or connect a couple of things because both of us have wanted to touch on this Rich Paul piece in the New Yorker where the unnamed executive in the AGM uh, reportedly said that player empowerment is the worst thing to happen to professional sports. And yeah. so I see, you know, name, image, and likeness, and, and, and I would advocate for a, a universal name, image, and likeness policy. So is there not unfair recruiting advantage in various states that beat one another to the punch to adopting name, image, and likeness uh, legislation? But it just, it really... It doesn't speak well for somebody um, for what they're really about. For somebody who's done so much for the game, who's so universally respected, yeah. uh, who was who's mentored the players and the men that he has for and it goes for him and Roy Williams for reportedly. OK, this is a source, but reportedly for the thing that's pushing him out the door is players finally getting even a small piece of the pie. That just, when I read that, I'm, I just, I'm like, ugh. That's amazing. Like, come Isn't on, that man. amazing? Not you, too. Yeah, right. And Not you, like, come on, really? Yeah. And, and, and Mike, on top of that, you're, you're Mike Krzyzewski. You mean to tell me if it's really that much of a problem for you that you can't work within the system, you can't compromise, or, or, or you can't, or you can't adjust to it? All right, this is this is what gets you out of the door. You're not burned out. Uh, you don't want to explore other things. You don't want to travel. No, it's, it's not family. What, what it's not you, health. What gets you is the players, the one and dones. And here's the here's, here's the irony of this. The irony of the one and dones transfer portal out of control. All this stuff is that Mike Shashevsky maybe did it better as far as recruiting. Oh, recruiting classes. Now, it didn't oh, always yeah. trans it didn't always trans. Once he got off his high horse, the NCAA tournament. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you yeah. had all Once these he, guys. Yeah. Oh, he Think of, yeah. How many yeah. times, how many times did we say Duke had the number 1 recruiting class in the country? And and most recently, yeah. you look at the NBA playoffs right now, let's see who's going to be playing for the Knicks tonight. Uh RJ Barrett a, 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 a lottery pick and Zion Williamson, the number 1 pick. Those guys were teammates. You had two top yep. five picks on your roster and you couldn't win a championship. So some t some coaches look at it and say, yeah, this is the system. It's one and done like Gonzaga last year getting to the championship game before losing. Hey, this is what we got. Yeah, we got one shot at it. John Calipari has dealt with this. We got one shot at it. We're going to have these guys for a year. We deal with it. Hey, is it perfect? No. Is it back? Is it classic Leitner? And and uh, and Bobby Hurley Grant Hill. in the early 1990s, yeah. where you knew you had a guy for three or four years. No, it's not. But you got to adjust. Times change. Well, and coaches he has. change. And he has. And I, right. You think he could adjust to this too? You're right. I guess. But I, I mean, I don't, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that 
on on this day. I had to get that off my chest, but I do want to yeah. just like say thanks, you know, um, because it's like, you know, nobody was ever neutral on Duke, and it's going to be hard to imagine Duke being Duke without Coach K. The players, obviously, we just it's talked not, about it coming on. I can't even imagine. But you know, there's certain brands, you know, whether it's Alabama football, the Yankees, the Cowboys, the Lakers. There are certain uh, institutions, certain brands that are just they move the needle like nobody else does. And Duke, of course, moved the needle. Uh, you know, Duke was a team that people either loved or loved to hate, of course. And 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 I go back to a conversation that you and I had, and I call it a conversation generously. It was more of a shouting match about the fact that, especially given and the difference with with Coach K versus Nick Saban is he's at least had a hand, a, a, a heavy hand, a, a role with USA Basketball as a head coach of USA Basketball for a long time. Um, you know, I, I don't think you have to coach in the pros to be considered among the greatest coaches of all time. And I think Mike Shashevsky has a seat at that table, along with Phil Jackson and and Red Arbach. Uh, and anybody else you want to put uh, among the greatest basketball coaches ever, Greg Popovich. I think Mike Krzyzewski is right up there on that Mount Rushmore, regardless of the fact that his success came on a collegiate level. And uh, we owe a great bit of thanks because the, the, the sports history has in part been authored by Mike Krzyzewski's uh, time at Duke University. It's been a, it's been a great time. It's been fun to watch. It's been fun to root against here and there, maybe fun to root for. Once in a while, I don't remember rooting for him that much. Do you? Were you were you ever a Duke fan at any point, or, or were you a, a were you a hardcore yes. Duke hater? Where did you fall in line when it came to Duke? Duke no, basketball? no. I was kind of just raised was, uh, to hate Duke. I, no, I was a, I was a Duke fan. I like Duke, yeah. uh, and I remember uh, I remember when they first started to come up a bit. You know, like when they would, um, you know, I, I go back. You know, remember, uh, there's a nine year, nine uh, year age difference between us. So uh, I remember watching <laughs> uh, the, I think it was a 1986 uh, national championship game between Duke and Louisville. And that was uh, Never Nervous Purvis. And uh, Duke lost that game, mm -hmm. obviously. I was rooting for Duke because uh, I just really wanted to see them win. Uh, I, liked, I liked Tommy Amaker and Johnny Dawkins then. Uh, Tommy Amaker, one of my friends now, a, a good friend. So I, I've always appreciated what their program represented. I was a big Grand Hill fan in college, uh, and, and once yeah. again was disappointed. Uh, was disappointed when when I think they played a national championship game against Arkansas, maybe uh, Grand Hills last year, and lost that game. Uh, you know, just always rooted for Duke and just liked some of the players that they had there and just what the school stood for. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I would consider myself a Duke fan and even a Coach yeah. K fan, and I would say I like that Coach K made that connection with USA Basketball. So he was rooted, firmly rooted in college basketball, but then had that connection with the pros and had a lot of respect from pro basketball players. Yeah, the way he was able to coach the huge Olympic amount team. of respect. But I, I gotta huge say, of respect. I, maybe I'll meet you in the middle and I'll say, yeah, I always believe that. The best coaches are also great teachers. And I'll call Coach K mm -hmm. one of the great teachers in history. But I think it's I just yeah. think it's different. When you're coaching the NBA and you're coaching college basketball, the rules make it different. Your challenges make it different. So he's a great well, college basketball different. coach. But I wouldn't say I can't go tail of the tape between Phil Jackson and Mike Shashevsky because I think they're just playing they're coaching two different games. One, one guy's coaching young men, and the other guy's coaching grown men who are getting paid out loud. The other's getting paid on the slick. <laughs> you know, so it's just different. Yeah. 82 yeah. games, 30 games, um, graduation, one and done. Okay. It's just different. Hey, thanks for watching Brother from Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us. 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.